Okay. So student, we are going to do a lab for real application cluster. So uh, let's get started. And uh, I do want to let you guys know that for real application cluster, we cannot use the infrastructure, Oracle cloud infrastructure that is not an option here. So what we are going to do is we are logging in into the platform as a service and we are going to create an instance. You will see how easy that is. So let's get started. So you can see my screen. I'm logged into the platform as a service. So first thing I do is create an instance. And I've got different options here. I'm going to say create a database. And uh, what we are going to create is a real application cluster. For us to create a real ap application cluster, there are different addition to Oracle software. We've got standard addition with uh, very limited options. So in order to create a real application cluster, we need to go with the extreme performance. So we're going to create an extreme performance. So your request will be submitted to create a database service instance. You must download the SSH key and credential to access your instance. So here we are. We are in the console, and we are in Oracle Cloud Service, which was, which is actually a platform as a service. So let's click on Create Instance. We're going to give it a name for the instance. Uh, we can, because we are creating a rack cluster, let's give it rack. And we might want to go with uh, 11G, and we're going to do Extreme Performance. So you know that if I had selected the software edition at, as say, high performance, my options are limited. So I am going to do an extreme performance, and that's what is needed. Whenever you're going to present this to your customers or to your company, you need to have extreme performance in order to create a real application cluster. So we're going to create a database clustering with rack. For password, we will give it uh, a password which should uh, hopefully they like. We're going to keep the standard of 25 gig of usable space. Uh, this is an exercise to create a real application cluster. So we don't want to get into the details. From in the past exercise, we've learned how to create a a SSH keys. So we're going to paste it here. In order to paste it here, what I need to do is get into Putty Generate. I'm going to load my first key like I've been always doing that. I'll copy the public key and I'm going to paste it here. So I've added an existing key I had from the past, which uh, I believe you guys should have it too. So I'm done with the database part. For now, we are not going to do any backup and recovery. So we are going to leave it blank. We'll move down to the next one. Also, there are some advanced settings. So these are basically what time zone you want to select. In our case, we are not going to do that. We are going to go with the default. So we are at the page where it's going to create an instant instance called Rack. Our database name is going to be an ORCL. We are using uh, 11G Release 2. And we provided the SSH key. And we'll say Create. Now, this process takes a while. So in the past, I've seen it could go up to an hour. So what I'll do is at this stage, I'm going to pause the video. And uh, we'll uh, continue once this is created. So as you see, we are in the page where it's creating an instance. So it's got a rack cluster it's going to create, which is multiple servers. And it's at the same time, 
it is creating a database also for us on each of this servers. So we did uh, create the, the rack uh, cluster. I just wanted to bring up some important point which I forgot in the in the theory class is this DBA systems which we create the two rack instances they actually write to a common storage files so when this instance is writing to a certain file and if there is uh, a situation where both the instances are trying to get to the that file so there is a locking mechanism which is part of uh, the Oracle software. So it, not, it will not overwrite what is written by this uh, instance. So, so that you have to keep in mind. But both of them are going to write to the same file. So that's the benefit. You've got multiple. So you could actually multiply having multiple instances and have many other users Trans, do transaction at the same time, but the, sto the data stored is not going to be corrupted. It is going to be managed by Oracle software that nothing is overwritten. So all the data stays there. So this is what you will see. If we were to go to the next slide where we said if what happens if one of the instance uh, does go down. So again, those uh, connections which were going to the instance one, it's going to be transferred to instance two. Definitely at this stage, the instance two is going to be overloaded. So you want to make sure you bring up the first instance back up again. And as soon as it's healthy, it'll automatically, the system Oracle Rack software would know it's healthy and it's back up. And the uh, connections which were going to Rack two instead of Rack one will revert back to Rack one. But if the instance goes down, what happens is whatever is written again here, it's written to the uh, storage in the shared storage in the background. So uh, instances are created. So as you see, we have uh, a rack cluster which has two servers. Uh, These are the IP address for the two servers. And uh, the detail on each server is uh, each one has around two Oracle CPUs, memory of 15 gig, and storage of 95 gig. And, uh, if you click here, uh, like we saw it on the console, you could start, stop, restart this uh, server. Same way you could do it on the other server. So it also talks about uh, patch patches. So patches are generally uh, files which are provided by Oracle uh, to either fix an issue. Uh, it's like any other patch for any software. So in this case, we have just created, so there is no history of what patches are applied here. Uh, they do give you a readme file. Uh, you can click here and see uh, there is an available patch, which is this patch, uh, which mentions that uh, it's a PSU and it does mention it uh, requires a restart. And you can do this by just clicking here, pre-check, and if the pre-check passes, you can then patch it. This is the cluster. Now, as we saw in, this, in the slides, in theory, we talked about two, two servers. These are the two servers. So what we are going to do is we're going to start and connect to to both the servers, let's start with the first one. We all remember how to to connect this way. We go to SSH, we get a key, and as you remember, when we created this cluster, we provided the public key. So here we are connecting to this server. Uh, what we could do is we could sudo su so it makes me root here in this case. So I am root here. I am logged into that rack one cluster. Now I could be the client. Just think of me as a client who's going to connect to the database. Uh, so I'm going to do some checks to see what databases are running on the server. So So 
so it's an Oracle server which is running uh, or called ORCL. If you remember, we gave it that name. And ASM is also a process uh, running with a PMAN. This is a process. And that basically uh, manages the storage, the underneath storage on the database. So you don't have to manage that. So we know there is this database running. So I am going to set the environment so I can log in as, uh, as a user, as a client to this database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export the path. And I'm going to say I'm going to log into. So this is I'm just setting up the the environment to log into that database. So I'm exporting the Oracle home. So it knows to go into this directory to get the, all the executables I need. So in this case, in order to log on to the Oracle database, we use a command called SQL plus. So now it's asking for the user, username. So I'm going to log in as system. So these are uh, default users which are created when the database is created. So I'm going to do this password. If you remember, I had entered this password uh, when we created the system. I'm going to use that password. And I'm logged in. I am on the, so now I want to check which database this is. This is a command. It gives me the detail about the name. So we are currently logged into Oracle database and it, and the instance we are logged into, it's the, it's the first instance. Uh, we can do many other things here. Uh, so I want to check how many instances there are. So there is a table I can query. I'll query this table, which this table is going to tell me there are two instances. One is Oracle 1, one is Oracle 2. First one is on the Rack 1 server, second is on the Rack 2 server. Now, if I wanted information just for this instance, and I didn't want a lot of, because you could have multiple instances. Uh, I have seen instances, uh, 10 instances. So this could uh, jumble up your output and would be very difficult to read. So what you could do is you could just go to another table, uh, the only difference you will see between the two, it's the G. G is missing, so it's saying only give me the details for this instance. And this instance is Oracle 1, and it's on Rack 1 server. I can also check uh, what uh, patches, what is the patch level uh, on this one. And it's giving me the patch on both the servers. This is the patch level we are at. And this is the version of Oracle, which we had selected when we created. Another thing is, there is a command called Rack CLI. So this is basically to, to manage a Rack cluster. Uh, so. The executables for the Rack CLI are here. And the best part about this is, if you were to run this,
it, it's going to give you the details about the system. What uh, so it's going to describe uh, different parts of the system. So it's a it's a very good command actually. Rec CLI uh, is something new, and you can use to manage all your database instances through this. So the output here it talks about the home where the grid is. The grid home you would generally use to log on to the ASM, which actually is a different, uh, which is the underlying instance which manages the storage for for this database. Uh, the, the database home is called ORA DB 11204 underscore home one. So you could have multiple homes with a different uh, patch level. So with different versions. Uh, RDK, then it talks about Rack 2, and both should be similar. And it talks about uh, the storage, where the storage is. The This is the mount point where the storage is, local file. Uh, then it talks about shared file system, which is here on U02. Uh, another is U03. Uh, this is fast recovery area. Uh, this is generally to recover uh, your databases. And for redo, there is another mount point. So if I were to do df-k, this is a Unix command, which shows me all the mount points. If you remember, uh, in the part one, we created a instance, and then we attached the storage, and then we had to run the iSCSI command and format uh, the disk. This is all done for you in the platform as a service, so you don't need to do this. So it is all done behind the scene by Oracle. So now we are on the first instance. Similarly, what we could do is let's go to the second instance. And it's warning that you know we don't know about the server. Are you okay? We are going to say yes, we are okay. It's authenticating by the key we gave and the public key when we created, and we used our private key to authenticate. Again, we are going to sudo as root. We're going to set the path. We're going to set the home. Now, before we do that, we're going to look at what's running on the server. So this is ASM2. We saw one on the first node, and the second instance, Oracle2. So we I'm going to export the Oracle home here. And we are going to SQL plus again. Uh, so the executable for SQL plus is in this directory. And I have actually I've told the system that this is where you look for. parameter name and we are logged on to the second instance here uh, now we can also do the rack CLI so we are going to C 
CD there where the rec CLI is. And we are going to describe the system here. And it's going to give us the same output like the first one because it's describing everything. Here we are. We are giving us the rack two, rack one details, everything we discussed before. So let's do this now. This is our rack two instance as you see it. And this is our rack one instance. So both are connecting connecting the first one is connected to Oracle one and the second one to Oracle two. So this one is connected to Oracle one. We'll go to the second one. and it's connected to Oracle 2. So now both are available, so we can connect to that. Now I, as a client, I have logged into this databases. I can update the data here and uh, create a transaction. I can do everything here. 